Hi, my name's Sam and I'm here at the Centre for Wildlife Gardening in London to take a look at pollination. So what is pollination and how does it work? I'm going to have a go at showing you by doing some pollination myself. I've got a paintbrush here and I'm going to use it to mimic the action of a pollinator and have a go at pollinating this marsh marigold flower. I'm using the paintbrush to pick up pollen from the anthers, which are the male parts of the flower. You can see some pollen there stuck to the paintbrush. I'm now racing across the garden to find another marsh marigold flower and depositing the pollen onto the stigma, which is the female part of that flower. That's the green bit in the middle. This flower is now pollinated and can produce seed that will turn into flowers next year. I don't have time to pollinate all the flowers in the garden, but luckily there's lots of other pollinators out there too. Like this hairy-footed flower bee, for instance. So cool because they have hairy feet and they love flowers. Hairy-footed flower bees are solitary bees, which means they live alone and not in a colony like honeybees. The bee you can see here is a female and she's busy collecting pollen. You can see the pollen stores on her back legs. When she's got enough, she'll put the pollen in her nest with her eggs and seal it up. The bee grubs will eat the pollen and grow big and strong. They'll stay in the nest until next spring and then they'll hatch out as adult bees. These bees are another type of solitary bee called red mason bees. They're checking out one of our bee hotels at Centre for Wildlife Gardening and getting ready to make their nests. Some solitary bees are really small, like this one, who looks like it's having a great time collecting nectar and pollen in this calendula flower. This is another type of bee, the kind that makes honey, a honeybee. Honeybees are domesticated in the same way that sheep and cows are. Some people call them pollen pigs. Humans keep honeybees in hives like these ones to make honey. They collect pollen which is rich in protein and will help baby bees grow. They collect nectar which they turn into sugary honey which is full of energy and will keep the bees going over winter when there are no flowers around. Pollination is a beautiful example of cooperation in nature. Both the pollinators and the flowers get something really important that they need. The pollinators get delicious pollen and nectar and the flowers get fertilised. And it's not just bees that do the important job of pollination. Flies also play a role in pollination, like these hoverflies. Butterflies too. And even wasps. Unfortunately, lots of pollinator species are in decline. And that's worrying because without pollinators, plants can't reproduce. And plants are very important for supporting life on Earth. Scientists think the main reason that pollinators are in decline is because of habitat loss. And that means that pollinators aren't able to find enough food or places to live. There might be a small way that you can help though. As we've learned in this video, pollinators above all need flowers. If you're lucky enough to have a garden, a balcony, or even just a window box, you can help pollinators by growing some flowers. Plants like sunflower and calendula are really easy to grow from seed. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something about pollination and the crucial importance of pollinators in our ecosystems.